Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and I hope you're having a good Tuesday. I hope that if you are in the U.S. and you had a long Labor Day weekend that that was great for you and relaxing and got you recharged and ready for the upcoming fall. <laughs> All right, guys, today I'm here to share my August makes. Um, but before we get into that, I just want to make a couple of um, just little housekeeping announcements here on the channel. Number one, we have a, been having a lot more views here recently, which is fantastic. So welcome to all the new viewers um, here on the channel. It would help me tremendously if you guys would hit that subscribe button. I have videos that go up every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday without fail. So I haven't missed one yet. So um, anyway, if you would like to make sure that you're always noted, you can hit the notification to make sure you're notified, but make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you're always made aware of all of the uh, videos that I have going up. And we're in National Sewing Month in September here. I've got a lot of good content coming out this month. You don't want to miss any of it. On that note, um, I, we're getting into fall sewing. So this is my, uh, these are my August makes. This is probably the it for me for summer sewing until, like I said, I mentioned before February, February, for some reason I get in the mood to make summer dresses. I don't know why, <laughs> but I'm going to be switching to cold weather sewing, um, now until the foreseeable future. So this was kind of the end of my summer sewing, even though it's still really hot here, I am switching gears and it's time to do some fall sewing. So if you are also in that mode of switching to fall sewing, um, I am going to have a fall wardrobe update because I've added a few things to my wardrobe since I did my fall capsule planning. Um, but if you are new to the channel and don't know, I'm going to link down below my newsletter. If you would like to subscribe to my newsletter, I actually have a free PDF in that newsletter that walks you through if you want to make your own handmade uh, capsule wardrobe kind of your capsule wardrobe basics that can go through all the seasons but good building blocks to help you make your own capsule wardrobes each season i walk through all the patterns that are my tried and true patterns that fit into all of my categories and have a blank one for you to fill out as well um, I actually have a whole video where I talk about that. I'll leave it linked down below as well. Um, also included in that welcome email from the newsletter is a fabric buying guide, which is just a little card you can keep in your purse. It's like a business card size that um, lists the amount of fabric that I buy depending on the type of garment I think it's going to become. So if I'm fabric shopping and I don't have a specific pattern in mind for a fabric, the um, general amounts that I buy for that just is kind of a little um, card to keep in your wallet for all of that. Okay, so all that great stuff that happens over here on the channel, but let's get into my makes for August. Okay, so for August, I was able to get seven things sewn up this month, and I think you've seen, you haven't seen my finished Spencer pants yet. We'll get to that in a minute, and then there's two other things that you've not seen, but the other stuff you have seen. So um, for me, this was not like an overly prolific month. Um, I had a lot going on behind the scenes and also just trying to get my kids back to school and doing all that stuff that kind of comes with the month of August um, around here. Just a lot of new beginnings, you know, a lot of stuff starting back up um, as the school year starts back up. Um, and I know we start early here um, for a lot of parts of the world and even in the, in the U.S. here, um, we start at the beginning of August, which is really early for a lot of people. So we are all back into that kind of routine and gear. So getting seven things done is still really good, um, but it's maybe a little less than I typically do in a month. All right, so let's start with the things that you have seen, and then we'll get into the stuff that you have not. So you have seen my Distachify that I made for August. This is my Itch to Stitch Zacapane um, in the um, rayon spandex. I, this was kind of a wearable muslin for me. I wanted to see if I liked this um, pattern, if I liked the twist on my bust, or if I felt it drew too much attention to my bust. I really like it on my bust. In fact, um, I have some merino jersey that I've shown you guys in my fall plans that um, I kind of thought I would make this pattern out of it if I liked this one on me. I do like this one on me, so I am going to be making the one out of the merino jersey, and I'm going to do a sew along for that. I had a lot of questions um, asked about how hard was the twist to do, and it really isn't. It's literally going to be a, just a one-part um, sew along on the channel uh, that'll come sometime 
in a few weeks. So I've got one more week of the Spencer um, woven pant, and then I'm going to do a tutorial on how I use fold over elastic as opposed to binding on um, my Luna Lounge wear pajamas. And then the week after that, I think I'm going to do um, a sew along for the Zeka paint. So if you are someone that was interested in how this twist works and how that the finishing and all of that looks on the inside, um, I will be doing a sew along on that. So stay tuned for that. And I'll be doing it on the sewing machine instead of the serger. So you can see if you don't have access to a serger, how you can also do this and knit on a sewing machine. All right, I also made up this month, also with Pistachify fabric, the Itch to Stitch um, Nazir, I think it's the Nazir, um, hoodie and really was pleased with this one and how it made up. I love itch to stitch patterns. They're just, they fit me really well <laughs> with very little um, adjustment. I'm very excited. I mean, it's not been anywhere cool enough to be wearing this quite yet here. In fact, as I'm filming this, it's 90 degrees outside. So we've got a little bit before I can pull this on for my morning walks, but I think this is going to be a great little throw on, um, for the transitional weather that we will have at some point. <laughs> whenever that kind of comes up. But yeah, I love this, um, the fabric and I love the uh, kind of the gold flex that I've got going on in this fabric. And I was very pleased with how this pattern went together and the finishing on it. Um, I mean, I've talked about this already, but it's got the, the twill tape where I just used ribbon to finish off the edges of the zipper and the seam where the hood connects. It's just a really beautifully thought out pattern as are most itch to stitch patterns. And um, yes, I'm excited to pull this out when the fall gets going. So honestly, here I am like, this is the end of my summer sewing. I really didn't do all that much summer sewing, did I? Um, okay, we'll do this last itch to stitch. Um, this is the new pattern release. This is the Cantabria um, itch to stitch trench dress. Um, so this could be a summer. I made mine in more fall appropriate fabric so I can wear mine in the fall, but this could easily be made in linen or wool, depending on if you're going into warmer months or cooler months. Um, love this dress pattern. It is finished off so beautifully on the inside, completely lined. I cannot wait to wear this layered over turtlenecks as well as layered underneath my Metro blazers. And I think this is going to go well under all of my Metro blazers. <laughs> So that is exciting for me. Um, but yes, the new Cantabria dress um, by Itch to Stitch. This pattern is now available and I highly recommend it. It was a really fun sew. Had a very um, Itch to Stitch heavy uh, sewing month this month without even realizing it. <laughs> Okay, um, the last one that you guys have already seen was my Sew the Look dress. This is my linen. Um, you know what, guys? I was doing some more research on this, um, the dress. So the dress that I was sewing the look for was a Dolce & Gabbana dress. I bought this fabric in Venice. Um, I think this is Dolce & Gabbana fabric. The print is just almost completely identical. Um, and I would not, and you know, it wasn't an expensive fabric. It was, um, you know, this dress probably cost me, um, $200, $250 probably, um, in fabric, um, and notions to make. It didn't take me very long time wise, but it probably took me about, yeah, about $250 to make the dress, which considering the actual Dolce & Gabbana dress that I made this off of is over a thousand dollars. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> And I get compliments every time I wear this thing. I love it. But um, yes, this is my, um, I'm going to call it my Dolce & Gabbana dress. <laughs> um, and I have been wearing this quite a bit. Like I said, the temperatures are still very warm here. Um, I went out for a dinner date with my daughter the other, or last night, and um, a nicer restaurant, the two of us. We went out for sushi. And um, I wore this and got compliments on it. It's just a really... Um, and I wear it casually, I wear it with a heel, or I wear it with flats, and I just get comments on it every time I have it on. It's just a happy dress. So very pleased I got this made up. And this is my first of the um, fabrics I bought in Italy that got made into a dress. So okay, out of the stash and onto my body, which is the goal. Okay, and then the rest of these three things you have not seen yet. The tank is just a tank I grabbed so that my model wasn't topless. Um, but the first thing um, that I have made that we're in the sew along for right now are my Spencer woven pants. I would hold these up, but I'll just show you pictures of me in them. Um, I am obsessed with these. So um, I, you have not, I've not talked about the adjustments that I've made to these or anything like that. So I am going to get a little bit more detailed with these last three items. 
So these are the Spencer Woven Pants. I make a size 12 in style art patterns um, across the board, both for my tops and my bottoms. For uh, the bottoms, I did do, a lot of times with the bottoms, I'll do a full belly adjustment. Because this is looser through the hip, I did not do that, but I made my, my pleats smaller in order to give me the room and the waist that I needed. Um, so I shrunk each dart by, I gave myself an extra inch in the waist um, and shrunk each dart a half of an inch. So it gave me a full and extra inch around the waist. And then I lengthened the waistband the appropriate amount um, as well. Other than that, I shortened the leg by an inch and that is it. That is the only adjustments that I made. I just shrunk my darts, added that extra width to the waistband because um, I'm just very straight through here. <laughs> I always have to grade up for my waist. Um, and typically I do a full belly adjustment to get that additional width to the front. But because it was already loose fitting, I just messed with the, with the pleats there to give myself the room that I needed. And I think that worked fine. They are fully lined. I used a wool suiting and um, like a gabardine, wool gabardine suiting. And it was in my stash, fully lined in Bimberg. And it's got a welt pocket in the back. And um, these beautifully... Um, I said pipe, they're pipe pockets, because that's what the pattern says. They're not really piped, it's more of a flange. But they are um, just a beautiful pocket detail of um, highlighting that uh, pocket there. Functioning fly in the front. I added belt loops to mine. The pattern does not have belt loops, but I, I like to wear belts with my waisted pants like this. So I went ahead and added belt loops, and then it's got this beautiful thick cuff here at the bottom. They're meant to be longer. Now I have them styled um, as you're watching them with tennis shoes just to kind of have some fun with them, but um, I think this would be equally fun with my platformed loafers or with a heeled boot. I actually just thrifted a pair of J. Crew calfskin boots that are brown with like a white dot. They look like a... Um, they look like deer skin, really. They're not, but they they do look like that. Um, anyway, they're really cool. I just thrifted a pair and hardly worn, so that's very exciting. Those would be adorable under this. Anything, I do need a little bit of a heel or height so that I'm not dragging the hem on the ground, but that was the intention. I wanted this to be um, longer to make my legs look a little bit longer. I don't know that I, I paired these with the pink tennis shoes, and so I put the uh, pinkly pinkish purpley belt with them. I don't know that I'm crazy about that. So I don't know with the white shirt. I don't know. It feels like a lot of contrast colors going on, but I do feel like once I get a few other things made up for my fall capsule wardrobe, that these pants are going to slide seamlessly into that. And I'm very excited about all of that. Um, yes. So those are my Spencer woven pants. Again, I have a full sew along on the channel. Well, Part five, the last part comes out on Sunday, so um, you'll, you can go and finish off the pair of pants for yourself. But um, last Sunday, so the Sunday we just had um, part of the sew along was also a tutorial to show you how to line a pair of uh, pants, period. So if you have a pair of pants that you want to make in a wool and you'd like them to be lined so they aren't itchy, it works for any pant pattern. Um, I'm doing it on the Spencer pant pattern for this, um, although the Spencers do not come with a lining pattern. I made that up, but I show you how to do that. And um, that's all on the channel already. So you want to take a look at that. Okay, um, we're going to do this, <laughs> the boiler suit last. All right, and then I am so glad I got this fabric made up. This is the Pattern Emporium Wonderlust. This dress took me maybe 30 minutes to sew, maybe. <laughs> it's such a quick make. It's like making a t-shirt. Um, it's just longer. So you have more that you're trying to like feed through the machine, feed through the serger. So this is this beautiful digital print um, cotton spandex jersey that I bought when I went fabric shopping back in April or May um, down at Let's Sew, and um, I'll link the fabric down below. But I love, they still have some, but I am just so obsessed with this, with this dress. I love this dress pattern. The fabric makes me so happy. I was going to make myself a short sleeve version, but as I was cutting it out, I'm like, you know what? We're going into the cooler months, and um, I'm just going to make it three-quarter. This will serve me well into three seasons of my year, maybe not the middle of summer where it's super hot, but typically I want sleeveless then anyway. I don't know that a short sleeve makes a difference. So I went ahead and put the three quarter sleeve links on, um, sleeves on these. I just think I'll wear it a ton. Um, I can wear these under my Metro blazers. I can wear these under my cardigans or yeah, all the things. Uh, but I'm very excited to have this in my wardrobe. Again, the fabric just makes me happy. The other, um, the French terry that I had pulled for my plans, I decided to push that um, and I'll just hang on to that until the spring um, and make something really inspired when that time comes around. But I am glad that I got this. This was my favorite, um, that I got this um, made up. So, yes, you'll see this probably a lot here soon. Oh, I make the size 14. 
15 in pattern emporium patterns and then I did the full bust adjustment the way the pattern tells you to um I think that's right a 14 oh gosh I don't even know I've made so many of these um and then I shortened it one inch at the waist I brought bring the waist I brought the waist up one inch but that's the only adjustments I've made to this pattern full bust adjustment but I do it the way the pattern suggests not my typical dartless full bust adjustment and um that yeah then just shortened it one inch by the waist and that's it um it, there's different skirt lengths with this. It's just such a good dress <laughs> and it makes up so easily. Highly recommend. Okay, finally, this was a new to me pattern. So I have been eyeing the Closet Core Patterns Blanca Flight Suit since its release. In fact, I thought I had bought it and I had not. I had to buy the pattern. Um, but I've really been wanting to make one and I just haven't gotten around to it. So I, if you guys have watched any of my fall plans videos, um, I am planning on making, I have some um, kind of a chartreuse colored linen, heavyweight linen that I want to make the um, cropped pant version, short sleeves of this Blanca flight suit out of that. And um, I wanted to test it out. I can't get any more of that fabric because they don't make that color anymore. I got that from the fabric store down in New Zealand and they just cut way back on the heavyweight linen colors that they offer. And so I can't get that color anymore. I can still get the heavyweight linen, just not that color. And that's kind of what drew me to this piece was the color. So um, I wanted to just check. And I had purchased this um, digital print, cotton spandex. Um, so it's a woven, it's a cotton sateen, but a thicker, cotton spandex um, sateen from um, uh, University of Sewing, same shopping trip where I went to Let's Sew and got this fabric. I was very into the digital prints. And I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it, but I, bought, I did buy the rest of the bolts, so you can't get this fabric anymore. And um, when I was trying to decide about the Blanca, I was on Instagram and saw someone had made a, a, a fun print Blanca flight suit and cut it off into shorts. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to make one of those and I should use that stretch cotton sateen for my stash. Like that would be perfect. So that's what I did. And I <laughs> am ridiculously in love with this. So the joke was, this kind of reminds me the fabric, uh, once I pulled it out, of the camouflage that looks realistic, you know, that hunters wear, um, that looks like, you know, my brother-in-law duck hunts and he's, and it looks like you're in the grasses and stuff like that. It's a, it's a digital print but looks realistic. I told Jenny, I said, I feel like this is what that looks like, but I could like be camouflaged in a flower shop. <laughs> so I could go to a flower nursery and just be completely camouflaged into the background. She thought that was really funny. She's like, you need to get some pictures within the shrubbery in this outfit. Um, it is bright and it is ridiculous and I absolutely love it. I actually wore this to church on Saturday night. We went to church on Saturday night this week instead of Sunday morning. Um, we don't typically go on Saturday nights. Our church does multiple services um, because I serve, my kids and I serve one service on Sunday mornings and then we attend the second one. But um, we didn't have to serve this past weekend, so we decided to go Saturday night, which is a little bit more casual. So I wore this with my pink um, platformed gazelle, Adidas gazelles, and I love, <laughs> just love it. Um, I opted for the version with the little belt and I did buy the little belt pieces from Closet Core. Um, they have the hardware for these belts um, on their website and they're very reasonably priced. I bought two of them because I think I'm going to do the same belt treatment for the linen one as well. I put the um, regular patch pockets on the front. I thought about leaving them off, but I felt like, you know, it's a boiler suit. It needs all the details. Um, I just did the plain ones. And then I've got the patch pockets that are here on the front. And then there are two pockets that are also on the back. This actually made up really quickly, considering I thought this was going to be a long and, and, and intense make. It really wasn't that bad. Um, did the short sleeves. I played around with the inseam because this does not come with shorts. Um, it comes with a couple lengths of pants. So I just shortened up the leg arbitrarily and was like, okay, I think if anything, I'm leaving this a little bit long and then I can shorten it as need be. Um, and, and it ended up actually being perfect. So I did an inch and a half um, hem on these and I was worried that the proportion would be off. These needed to be short enough, not too short, but short enough that everything balanced and not too long that it looked um, frumpy. So I felt like it was a very delicate balance, but I feel like I did hit that hem really well. It has a zipper that goes all the way down the front and there's a little zipper guard here in the back. It's got a, um, a collar without a collar stand. It's just like a camp collar on here. And um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so fun. 
So I'm very much looking forward. I think all the adjustments I made on this are perfect for my green linen one. And the only adjustments I made to this are that I did a um, one and a half inch full bust adjustment on the size 12. Um, there's quite a bit of ease in this, so I didn't have to do quite as much of a full bust adjustment. So I did three quarters on each side. So for an inch and a half across the front, and then I added that addition um, to the side seams of my front um, bottom pieces so that my fronts would match um, because that also added an inch and a half in the waist and I don't need it in the hip. Um, so I left the hip alone, but I did add an inch and a half to the waist on just the front pieces so that the, um, so three quarters on each side of the side seam of the front so that these would fit together because I like to have a little extra room at my waist and it seemed to work perfectly. So um, I didn't shorten anything. I am very careful about that. So this is supposed to be low slung. The waist on this is supposed to be below your natural waist. Um, and I just didn't want to shorten things because, you know, jumpsuits, you shorten them too much and then you can't bend over or you cut yourself in half. And I've done that before, um, shortened like an overall pattern and then not been able to move in it. So that is not what we're going for. So I, I shy away of doing less. Um, and I thought, well, if it's too long in the rise, if I, you know, I can shorten it a little bit maybe for the next one, but it was perfect. Um, you know, my, my bust length eats up a lot of um, room, especially when we're dealing with, you know, when it's a one long length to go the full body um, with a crotch seam. So um, yeah, I left that alone and that seems to be perfect. So just the full bust adjustment and then making the adjustment to the bottoms seemed to be just what I needed. And now I have a crazy Blanca flight suit and I can't wait to make my linen one. So there we have it, guys. Those are my seven makes for August. I hope you have enjoyed this one. I um, currently have got some tutorial stuff all cut out and ready to go. So we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up on the Sunday videos, which is where I do mostly my tutorials and my teaching type of videos that come up on there. Um, but we've got a lot of fun stuff coming up in September. So make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. All right, guys, I hope you have a wonderful Tuesday. Get some sewing in this week, and I'll see you again on Friday. Bye!